Hey guys, welcome back. You know, even though this is a season of viewer requests, it wouldn't be Viridian Flashback if I didn't talk about Star Wars at least once in the show. And thanks to viewer Sim Shinri, we'll be doing just that, as we'll be taking a look at two of what many consider to be the best in the franchise. Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2. So let's head into the fight and see if these galactic shooters are collection worthy. As far as story goes, there really isn't one in the first Battlefront. There is a campaign, but it's mostly just playing battles that were in the films. However, Battlefront 2 does have a story to go with its campaign. You play as a member of the 501st Imperial Legion, known as Vader's Fist, playing through battles they partake in from the Clone Wars through the classic trilogy, while the story is narrated by an unknown soldier in the troop. ...to take out a droid energy collector. What Kiari Mundi didn't know, however, was that our unit of the 501st was really after an experimental Mygidan power source that the Chancellor wanted for his super laser. Keeping Mundi in the dark wasn't easy. The Jedi had become increasingly wary of the Chancellor's doings, and were on the lookout for the slightest hint of treachery. Just like the rest of them, though, he never caught whiff of what was really going on, until it was far too late. So yeah, story is not the strongest suit in Battlefront, even with the improved storytelling of Part 2. But that's okay, as gameplay is the main focus here. Both battlefronts are third-person team-based shooters where the goal is to defeat the opposing team either by depleting their reinforcements or capturing all of their command posts. Each game lets you play as soldiers from the classic films as well as the prequels, fighting on stages chosen from many of the iconic fights, like the standard Battle of Hoth. But since I'm covering two games at the same time that are more or less the same, I'll talk about them separately starting with part one. After you choose a side to play as, whether it's the Republic versus the Separatists or Rebels against the Empire, you pick a base to start at, then choose your class with a total of five. Infantry, Heavy, Scout, Sniper, and a faction-specific special class like a Jet Trooper or a Droidica. In battle, the game controls like any big shooter, which is a good thing, especially if you switch the camera to first person as you run to conquer each base, taking out enemies in your path. Enemy forces have captured a command post. We've captured a command post. We've captured a command post. We've cut off the enemy's reinforcements. We've captured a command post. Throughout most of the stages, there are assortment of vehicles to commandeer, like speeders, tanks, even aircraft such as X-Wings and TIE Fighters, although they're a pain in the ass to fly. Hell, there are even giant walkers that double as mobile bases. On top of that, some stages have non-player creatures that will try to mess with you, like Tusken Raiders and Jawas. Deserters will be shot! <laughs> Moving on to the modes in Battlefront, you have the aforementioned Campaign, Instant Action, where you choose a level and faction and get right into the fight. Then there's Galactic Conquest. This mode is more strategy based as you choose a campaign you want to play through, then make your way around the galactic map, capturing enemies' planets and conquering the galaxy. When you prepare to fight the opposing side on one of their planets, you can use a planetary bonus from any of the planets you've obtained, like extra troops or having an NPC hero help you, such as Luke Skywalker or Count Dooku. Then it's good old Battlefront as usual, as it plays out like a regular mission with a new planet as your reward. Repeat these tactics till you rule the galaxy. Of course, Battlefront has multiplayer with split screen and system link, the only options available now. But unless you have a friend who doesn't mind sharing a screen, or a bunch of friends with their own Xboxes and TVs, you'll probably just play this one solo. Even if the 
gameplay of Battlefront is a little basic. It's still solid, but that's okay, because that's what sequels are for. For the most part, Battlefront 2's gameplay is identical with the obvious new tweaks and changes that sequels tend to get. For starters, there are new special classes for factions, like Wookiees and Dark Troopers, as well as bonus perks like Energy Regen for performing well in battle, such as surviving a match for a certain amount of time. Vehicles make their return as well, but you may have noticed that ships aren't on the maps anymore. That's thanks to one of the most welcome features of Battlefront 2, Space Combat. Each team has their own starship base with the task of destroying the others. You have a variety of different ships to pilot, like bombers and starfighters, and only two classes to choose from, infantry and pilot. There are many ways to take out the enemy base, with the best being sabotage from within. Not gonna lie, these are fun to play. But that's not all. The best thing added to Battlefront 2 is after you score a certain amount of points in a match, you can play as an iconic hero from the films. Obi-Wan, Vader, Luke, and more are available to dish out some pain for a limited time, and it's totally worth it to force dash through the battlefield slicing up troopers as you go. Getting into the modes of Battlefront 2, the usual suspects from the first game return, but Instant Action and Galactic Conquest have received a few upgrades. Instant Action, for instance, has more game modes than just Conquest. You have Hunt, where you play as either humans or a particular creature, like Wampas or Jawas, and fight to the death. One or two flag captured the flag, space versions of these modes, and my personal favorite, Hero Assault, where it's an all-out war between all of the hero and villain characters available. Seriously, I could play this mode all day. As for Galactic Conquest, you're still choosing a campaign and trying to take over the galaxy, but now you earn credits for taking over planets which are used to unlock classes and troop bonuses like more troops and playable heroes. Taking a great mode and making it even better? I'm sold. Regarding multiplayer, Split Screen was dropped from Part 2, so System Link is the only way to play this game with friends now, which really sucks. So it's painfully obvious that Battlefront 2 is a much better game than its predecessor, but to its credit, Part 1 is still solid to play. But space battles, playable Jedi, I mean, come on. Again, bringing up the obvious, but Battlefront 2 is going to look a little bit better than the first, but not by much. The characters, ships, and stages are modeled pretty well after their respective sagas in Part 1, and in Part 2, everything just looks a little bit more crisp. For audio, the music is all from the film, so yeah, John Williams, no explanation needed. As for voiceover, the most you really hear is when the characters grunt or die, maybe a few words here or there, as well as the commentator letting you know when outposts have been captured or when the match is over. Chamber. 
So that's Star Wars Battlefronts 1 and 2. Are they collection worthy? Well, part 2 is. Okay, okay, part 1 is still fun to play, but obviously part 2 is the better choice. However, if you're on a budget, you may want to stick with part 1, as it's going for 15 bucks at the cheapest, while part 2 goes for around $50. Although, however, with the new Battlefront out, that may change. Of course, I haven't played the new Battlefront, so I can't really tell you how that one's going to be. But before I head off, I want to thank Ree for requesting these games. They're very fun and probably my favorite Star Wars games of all time, next to a certain RPG series. So, that will have to cover another time. But for now, this is the Deli Popka saying if you want to play retro, try going green. I'll see you next time. Matt said if it's good enough for Cindy Lauper, good enough for me.